So we talked a little bit about independent events. Now let's look at the other side of that. Let's look at dependent events. Two events are dependent if knowing the outcome of the first event does not provide, or sorry, does provide information for the second event. So when we're looking at dependent events, again, we're not looking at the results from a single trial, excuse me, single trial of an experiment. We're looking at the results from more than one trial. So here we have another contingency table. So the first question tells us, to find the probability that a randomly selected person wants to have pizza rolls given they want to play poker. So here we see this new word given. When we see the word given, that means we have a dependent event. And it's dependent on whatever follows. So given we find someone who wants to play poker. What is the probability that they want to have pizza rolls? So the way we write this is I'm going to say the probability of pizza rolls given, this line here stands for given, they want to play poker. So this given they want to play poker, basically what that says is, I only care about the people that want to play poker. Any other person that chose something else, I don't currently care about them. I mean, I care about them, but I don't care about them. So the total number of people that want to play poker, that becomes my overall group of interest. That's going to become the denominator of my fraction. So poker total is going to become the denominator of this fraction. And then the numerator is going to be people that wanted pizza rolls and poker. So for this one, looking at the total for poker. So given we're looking at a person who wants to play poker, 25 people want to play poker. How many of those 25 people also wanted to have pizza rolls? There were 10 people who wanted to play poker and wanted to have pizza rolls. So 10 over 25 is 0.4. Let's do another. Find the probability that a randomly selected person wants to play Wii Bowling given that they want cookies. So whatever follows this word given, first of all, given says, okay, I've got dependent events here. Whatever comes after the word given, that becomes the group that I care about. Okay, you can also think of it as, okay, I'm in a room with these people. I have 115 people in the room. First, I'm going to ask the people to stand that said they wanted cookies. So let's start writing this out. So probability of we given cookies. So I'm in this room and I say, okay, if you wanted cookies, please stand up. However many people stand up when you say that, that's what goes in the bottom. So 30 people stand up. Okay, now, of the 30 of you that are standing, there are 30 people standing. How many of you want to play Wii Bowling? Raise your hand. So 30 people are standing. Only the people that are standing, how many of them are going to raise their hand? Four. Four of the 30 people that voted for cookies also voted for Wii Bowling. Which is 0 0.1333. One more example. 
given that they want to play Wii Bowling, find the probability that a randomly selected person wants cookies. This is not the same question, even though we are looking at the same categories. And it's different because we've been given the people that want to do Wii Bowling. So we've been given the Wii Bowling. And then we're asked to find the probability that that person also wanted cookies. So given we look at someone who wanted Wii Bowling, so stand up if you want to play Wii Bowling. 23 people stand up. Now stay standing if you also want to eat cookies. Or raise your hand if you also want to eat cookies. Four people are going to raise their hand. So of the 23 people that wanted to play Wii Bowling, four of them also voted for cookies, which is 0 0.1739. These types of tables, looking at these given probabilities in this sense, these are used a lot with criminal justice. Given the offendant was fill in the blank. What is the chance that they also were fill in the blank? Okay, I'm not going to say anything to fill in those blanks. You can use your imagination. But if you're talking about criminals, given that the criminal was blank, what's the chance that they were also blank? Or the victim, given that the victim was blank, what is the probability that the victim was also blank? These are used a lot with criminal justice. Okay, so another example, a little bit different now. You are reaching into your wallet for some change. You know that you have three quarters, four dimes, six nickels, and nine pennies. If you do not put the coin back into your wallet after each pick, what is the probability that you grab a quarter, then a nickel, and then a penny? So we're looking at grabbing a quarter first, followed by a nickel, and then finally a penny. So we're digging around trying to find change. We all know we can't really find change right now. So I want to know the probability that I get a quarter and a nickel and a penny in that order. And when I pull out the quarter, I don't put it back. And what's important about that is when I go to find the nickel, I now have a different number of coins in the purse or in the wallet. So when I reach in to find the quarter, there are three quarters, and there are three plus four plus six plus nine, 22 total coins in my bag. Then I go to, then I reach in again, and I wanna grab a nickel. So now I'm gonna look at how many nickels there are. There are six nickels, Oopsies. But instead of 22 coins in the bag, now there's 21 coins in the bag. So the probabilities are changing because the number of coins are changing. The outcome for my second pick is going to change, be dependent on what I grabbed for my first pick. So my first pick is a quarter and my second pick is a nickel and now my third pick I'm looking for a penny so there are nine pennies and now I've taken two coins out of my bag so there are only 20 remaining so multiplying fractions I get 162 over 9240 we want to turn that into a decimal. 
0.0175. If you have these coins in your bag, the probability that you first grab a quarter, then you grab a nickel, and then you grab a penny by blindly reaching in to your bag is a little under 2%. So these are two different ways that we can find dependent events with probabilities and contingency tables.